Hey everyone, welcome to A Splash of Color, a water coloring channel. My name is Dora and today I'm going to be painting sweet peas. This is my first time ever painting sweet peas. The thing about the petals are that they really don't have any discernible shapes. So here I am basically practicing. I'm even using practice watercolor paper. I'm going to show you the process of me learning a new flower. I painted sweet peas six times and each time I get a little better. This video is very different than any other one. I haven't put out videos in a while and that's because they're not good enough or they have a mistake. I mean I just kept making excuses. But I felt like if I kept that attitude I'd never put another video out again. So I'm putting it out there, all the mistakes and everything. So this is a very common thing that I do. I see a mistake or I don't really love it so I just start painting freely, meaning I'm not really trying or even thinking about what I'm painting, I'm just painting. And now I am practicing different sweet pea flowers on all the empty spaces. I started from the bottom on this one, but you see that one purple flower, it ruined the entire painting. I know that's drastic, but it stuck out like a sore thumb and I could not ignore it. So I just do what I always do and just use the empty space for more uh, flower practice. And this time I focused more on color play, like bleeding and blending effects, and I really had fun doing it too. I've labeled some back flowers which are facing to the back and they're also behind the stalk. Each time I paint I learn new ways to paint the flowers and this time around I'm painting different petal shapes and flowers. There's not enough time, so I'm just gonna show flower placements for the first stalk. But this time I started from the top and I didn't mind the way it came out. I just thought I could do better. Plus, after the pink color dried, it looked very dull. Like these looked lifeless to me. If I'm not comfortable painting a flower, I won't paint it on the stalk. The free space is when I try out new flower shapes and new flowers, and if I like the way they come out, I'll add it to the stalk next time. This one is different and it's special. The first stalk, the pink one, I was so focused, you know, I was trying to make the perfect sweet peas and I ended up absolutely hating it. So I figured I'd just paint very freely for the rest of it and it actually ended up being, in my opinion, the best. I really liked it, the colors are great, and the movement of the flowers is just awesome. Notice that I didn't try to fit all kinds of different flowers in there, I just painted what I wanted and how I wanted.
I added a quick clip of this to show how stalk shape can really affect the outcome of the entire painting. I painted straight stalks here and that was a big mistake. It has pretty flowers and bold colors, but it's boring due to the straight stalks. Okay, so here we are on the last one, maybe the last sweet pea I'll ever paint. Uh, I don't know, but these turned out okay. So I guess the lesson here is that there is no single perfect painting because art is subjective. So even if you do paint a perfect flower or even an ugly flower for that matter, someone else may see it totally differently. Basically, it is what it is and I enjoy painting these and if it helps you or someone else, then that's even better. When I was painting this, I knew I was going to post it because it's the last one that I was painting. I was not painting anymore, so I knew it had to be perfect. And because I'm trying hard to paint, I feel restricted and my paintings reflect that. When I'm relaxed and painting freely, they tend to come out better. I mean, I can't just freely move my brush and get great flowers. It's almost like a perfect balance. This is really hard to explain, so I hope it's making sense.
this stock came out the best um, in this painting because at this point I was obviously still focused but in my head I knew I already messed up so I wasn't trying to be perfect. The flowers have movement, they're not all squashed together. There's several things that I notice I do differently if I'm not, you know, like rigidly focused on trying to do something. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for more creative watercolor inspiration, you should subscribe. Don't miss out on creative watercolor videos, ideas, and projects. And if you're interested in DIY bath and body projects, you should definitely check out this channel.